So Stu, we hear a lot of people talk about, I have SI joint pain. Um, can you touch on that a little bit? And maybe some of the exercises that you, in your experience, really irritate or make that worse? Yes, well, of the patients referred to us with SI uh, joint pain, more often than not, they do not have SI joint pain. It's actually a revert, referred pain from uh, something going on in a nerve root in their lumbar spine that passes behind the SI joints and behind the hip. So they are perceiving it as SI joint pain. But we still see patients with true SI joint pain. This is called the pelvic ring. Uh, so we have the two ilia, and there's actually an articulation at the pubis symphysis and at the two SI joints at the back. And you can see those micro movements. We see the SI joints here and here. I can move them, see the little micro movements here. And then you see the micro movements occurring right there and that's what's causing pain. But in order to get the micro movement, I can either compress the iliac crests or compress the greater trochanters. That's one type of micro movement. But the more common one is a mutation as one iliac wing goes anterior and the other goes posteriorly. What I'm mimicking is uh, a split squat. So if you could stand up, Kevin, I'll just demonstrate those two things. So if you can perform uh, a split squat, which can be a wonderful exercise. We're mobilizing the hips, we're creating balance, just perform the, the split squat. Perfect, and come back up. So it, it's quite a, uh, a loaded challenge of mobility. But now we get into the question of volume. There are some trainers who will now load this. They might add very heavy kettlebells to each hand, thinking that more load is better. What happens with that is your left ilia was mutating anteriorly, and the right one was mutating posteriorly. If you keep doing that excessively, you'll create a laxity and you will actually start to compromise the connective tissue across the SI joint so that a minor motion, just walking upstairs, for example, now becomes painful. So that would be a test of true SI joint pain versus, oh, I feel it in my SI joints when I sit working at the computer. No, the chances are that will be a neural pathway uh, to their, what's perceived as an SI joint pain. So the uh, split squat exercise, um, not necessarily a bad exercise, but an exercise that when you load it excessively can really cause, cause some issues. It's been the same theme all the way through this. There really isn't a bad exercise. There's just ones where the volume of training is not respecting the biological capacity of that person. Be a bit conservative on the split squats. Know what your goal is, choose the right tool, and prescribe it in a, uh, a volume that is within that person's capacity. That volume is changing, and uh, it's not a bad exercise, but it's bad the way some trainers think more is better.